The world is called Ente Isla. The Dark Lord Satan wants to conquer the human world. For that, he commands his four great generals to attack the four islands. But humanity is not going to just lay down while the devil screws them doggy style. No, they had great heroes as well who repelled the demons. They fought back and eventually laid siege to the demon lord Satan's palace itself. There, the heroes of humanity kill three of Satan's generals. So, the demon lord Satan and his last remaining general, Asiel, escape in a portal, and they arrive in modern-day Tokyo because that's where all animes happen. The moment they arrive, Satan and Asiel's forms automatically change into that of normal humans. Some police officers try to take them away because they're being suspicious, so Alciel uses his magic against them. Except that it doesn't work. They are powerless. Believing them to be foreigners, the police take them to the station. There, Satan uses the remainder of his hypnosis powers to gather all the information about this world. He also learns Japanese and transfers the knowledge to Alciel. Since this world does not have magic, their demon forms changed automatically to human forms. Now, Satan only has a limited supply of magic left. In order to live in this human world properly, Satan uses his hypnosis to obtain identity papers and money to open bank accounts. Then, they rent a place to live in. It's nothing compared to their grand castles back in Ente Isla, but they have no other choice. Their landlady is a woman named Miki. Miki is a pretty large woman. Satan and Alciel realize that there is a bigger evil in this world, and it's called money. So he and Alciel start filling job applications. Satan changes his name to Sadao, and Alciel changes his name to Ashia. Sadao and Ashia settle into their human lives. Ashia, being the loyal follower that he is, takes care of his master's home like a good house husband, while Sadao goes out to work. One day, he comes across a girl getting drenched in the rain. So, he gives her his umbrella. This could have been a meet-cute, but Sadao rides away immediately. Sadao works in the prestigious job that every university graduate is lucky to have, a fast food worker. He works in a franchise called McRonald's. For a Dark Lord who is supposed to be evil, Sadao has really good customer service skills. That's right, my man, earn that minimum wage like a boss. Sadao has adapted the human rat race, and he is worried about the promotion which will be given to the best worker in their chain. Because of his SpongeBob level of outstanding work, Sadao gets the promotion. As he's excitedly returning home, he comes across the girl from earlier. She says that she recognizes him as Dark Lord Satan. Turns out, the girl is Amelia, the greatest hero of Ente Isla. It was she and her companions who defeated Sadao back in their world. Now, she's come to this world to finish Satan once and for all. She pulls out her sacred weapon and… nah, it's just a cheap knife. Turns out, she's lost her magic too. Still, she tries to kill him. Some policemen stop them and take them to the station on the claim that they were quarreling. He scolds them and Amelia is powerless to do anything. Before they go on separate ways, Amelia threatens to finish the job one day or the other. Sadao is unfazed. Turns out, Amelia's human name is Emmy, and she works in a call center. She lives alone and eats ready-made food heated in a microwave. She yells in frustration when she realizes that she's become just like her sworn enemy. So, she goes to Sadao's home. Ashia craps his pants hearing Amelia's voice, but Sadao is chill, as usual, and tells him that she has lost her heavenly powers. When she sees the terrible condition that Satan is living in, she regrets her decision to come to this world. But she does not go back because she is saving her powers in case Sadao does something evil. A high priest was supposed to come with her, but he could not enter the portal in time. Emmy has her suspicions of them, so she starts following them around. But they always go and do basic human activities, like shopping and bathing. Sadao's fellow employee is a girl named Chiho. Chiho has a major crush on Sadao and gets jealous when she sees him talking to Emmy. That night, Emmy tells Sadao to continue living in Japan and forget about Ente Isla since he's doing so well here. Suddenly, a strange force attacks them with magical shots, so they run away. Since Emmy's home is far away and she lost her wallet while running, she asks if she can stay with him. Ashia is against the idea, but Sadao is really, really chill and he lets her stay. He even gives her a thousand yen for her bus ride home the next day. The next day, Emmy makes pickles for them as a thank you before leaving. 
Meanwhile, Chiho sends an email to Sadao asking if they can meet. Sadao accepts without realizing that she is probably asking for a date. Elsewhere, Emmy is working normally when she gets a call from a mysterious person who recognizes her as Amelia the hero. The man threatens to destroy both her and Sadao. Emmy senses the pure evil emancipating from the man's voice, but she does not recognize him. Being the good-hearted hero that she is, she warns Sadao about the mysterious caller who has threatened both their lives. Since Sadao will be meeting Chiho later, Ashia uses his cash reserve to give him a wardrobe makeover. When they meet up, Chiho asks him to hold hands. Sadao does not think anything of it and takes her hand, which causes her to melt with love. While they sit and have coffee, Ashia watches over them. Coincidentally, Emmy also arrives at the scene. She gets suspicious and goes in as well while Ashia follows, trying to stop her. Meanwhile, Chiho tells Sadao about some strange whisperings she heard recently. It was actually the language of Ente Isla, but she did not recognize it. Despite that, she apparently understood every word. Sadao realizes that Chiho seems to have been hit by a language spell. Just then, Emi and Ashia enter the cafe and Sadao almost loses his ish. But he ignores them and talks to Chiho casually. Chiho starts liking Sadao even more and she is just about to confess her feelings to him. But Emi foils the Dark Lord's life once again. In turn, Chiho yells at Emi for barging in so suddenly. She believes that Emi is Sadao's ex and gets even more possessive of Sadao. Suddenly, a massive earthquake destroys everything around them. Emi uses her magic to put Chiho to sleep. After that, Sadao comes in. And damn, his original devil look is pretty hot. Emi asks how he got his dark magic back, but even Sadao does not know. Emi is just about to summon her sacred sword to fight him, but Sadao starts saving Chiho and the other people. Emi is confused to see the demon lord Satan saving people. Emi thinks back to her past in Ente Isla. She was still a young child when Satan's army started attacking the world. One day, the priests of the Holy Church arrived at their doors. Her father told her that her mother is actually an angel, making Amelia the chosen hero who will defeat Satan. That was the last time she ever saw her father, because soon after, Satan destroyed her father's village. Back in the present, Sadao returns to his normal form. He finds out that Chiho is actually the daughter of the policeman named Sasaki who arrested him on the first day. The language spell he cast on Sasaki must have affected his daughter Chiho as well, allowing her to understand the language of Ente Isla. The next morning, Emi gives the thousand yen back to Sadao. As she's returning, she slips and falls because of her high heels. So Sadao takes her back in to fix her up. Emi is furious with shame. She is frustrated with how the Dark Lord is right now. If Sadao is capable of such kindness, then why did he burn villages, destroy farms, and kill so many people, including her father, back in Ente Isla? Sadao becomes sad and says that he never saw humans as normal people back then. But now, he's seeing things differently. Just then, Chiho comes to check up on Sadao, and she also sees Emi there. <laughs> what a misunderstanding. She leaves with tears in her eyes. They all follow her to console her. Meanwhile, two of Emi's companions can be seen traveling through the portal. Elsewhere, Chiho is walking with tears in her eyes when she comes across a strange kid who seems to know her. The kid reveals jet black wings and starts destroying the area. Sadao, Emi, and Ashia also arrive at the scene. The kid laughs at Sadao's pitiful state. He is actually Lucifer, another one of Satan's demon generals. Emi is shocked to see Lucifer here because she was the one who killed him. Turns out, Olba, one of the high priests of the church, saved him. Olba was the one who came with Emi, but he actually ditched her before entering the portal. Olba wants to kill Emi to take control of Ente Isla, and he got Lucifer to join him with the promise of restoring him to heaven. Lucifer attacks Ashia, then he attacks Sadao and Emi too, but they use their shield magic and run away. Sadao says that Lucifer can use his magic by absorbing the negative energy of the humans around him. This is why, during the earthquake, all the humans got scared and Sadao regained his demon form from their negative energy, like fear and despair. Lucifer asks him why he didn't use humanity's negativity to come back to Ente Isla. Sadao replies that it's because he's starting to like this world. So Lucifer takes Chiho and uses her sadness and despair to gain more energy to attack them. Olba uses his gun, forgetting that he's not in the US. 
Sadao gets injured, so he teleports them away to a place with a lot of people. Lucifer follows them and shoots a hole through Sadao. Then, Lucifer starts destroying everything around them in front of hundreds of people. But, 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 all that danger created fear in the humans, and all that fear gives Sadao back his powers. He holds the debris while Emmy summons her celestial powers. Sadao also creates a barrier where they can fight all out, and they do go all out. Ashia also joins the battle, having regained his true form. Despite their issues as a demon and a hero, Ashia and Amelia work together to fight Lucifer and Olba. Sadao also puts down the debris, and he finally enters the battle. He begins by scaring the crap out of his former general, Lucifer, then by beating the crap out of him. Once they subdue Lucifer and Olba, Lucifer reveals that he was the one who called Emmy at her work. She asks Sadao if he's going back to Ente Isla now that he's gained his powers back. But Sadao is more interested in doing a good job at McRonald's. Now that Chiho has seen everything, Sadao reveals everything to her, including his former conflict with Emmy. Seeing that Sadao and Emmy were actually enemies, Chiho gets more comfortable with Emmy. Just then, Emmy's two companions also arrive. They happily reunite with Emmy and are shocked to see her on such friendly terms with Sadao. The two companions tell her that it's not just Olba, but the entire church who are involved in trying to kill her and take control of Ente Isla. Despite Lucifer's protests, Sadao takes responsibility and uses his magic to fix everything that was damaged. Since Emmy doesn't seem to be in much danger from Sadao, the two companions go back to take care of the corrupted church. Chiho and Sadao continue working happily in McRonald's. Back in Ente Isla, the church discusses what to do next now that their plans have been found out by the heroes. So, they send their Grand Inquisitor, named Crestia, to take care of Satan and Amelia. Meanwhile, Lucifer has also adopted a Japanese name, Hanzo. And it is Hanzo's responsibility to research any magic left in this world. He demonstrates his internet skills by hacking Emmy's call center and calling her. That evening, Emmy yells at Sadao for messing with her. From their conversation, we learn that Olba has been arrested by the police and Lucifer, or Hanzo, is also wanted. This is why he's hiding in their apartment and cannot step out. Later, when Sadao goes home, a girl wearing a kimono falls down the stairs and into his waiting arms. The girl is actually Crestia, who's come to kill Sadao and Emmy. The next day, Crestia comes to their home and introduces herself as Suzuno, their new neighbor. Suzuno gives Sadao a gift of noodles for saving her yesterday. Meanwhile, Emmy's companion, Emeralda, has also sent her a whole lot of celestial magic. But she has put it in vitamin packaging that will look normal to humans. Next, Emmy goes to see what Sadao and his generals are up to. There, she is shocked to see Suzuno. Turns out, Ashia is feeling sick, so Suzuno is here to cook for them. Emmy starts eavesdropping, but she trips and falls down the stairway AGAIN, and she's caught by none other than Sadao. Emmy thanks him by beating the crap out of him. Once her tsundere behavior is done, they all settle down to eat some of Suzuno's food. Emmy notices something strange in Suzuno's kimono, but she just can't figure it out yet. Later, Suzuno asks Emmy for help in adjusting to Tokyo, so Emmy gives her her contact details. As she's leaving, she falls again, for comedic relief. When Sadao is leaving for work, Suzuno gives him a lunchbox. Later, Emeralda calls Emmy on her cell phone. On her cell phone? I can't get a signal in the middle of the city, and this Emeralda girl is getting signals in an entirely different dimension? What the hell? Anyways, Emeralda informs Emmy that the church is starting to make political moves on Ente Isla, and they may even attack Emmy soon. Meanwhile, Sadao sits down to eat the lunch that Suzuno made for him. Chiho immediately gets paranoid when she hears that a girl made it for him. Jealousy will even make a girl shake that devil's throat. The lunchbox is full of good food, including a heart-shaped dish. Chiho absolutely loses her ish. Elsewhere, two soldiers of the church from Ente Isla attack Emmy. She summons her sacred sword and fights back, but the warriors use their magic to sap all her magic away but the shoekeeper scares them away using… paintballs? What? Policemen arrive at the scene. While Emmy is waiting, she gets a call from Chiho who tells her that an emergency has occurred relating to Sadao. That's it for part 1. If this video gets 2000 likes, I will continue to part 2. 
Have a great day.